and there's my graph file. And inside here, I'm also going to put in the test code, which is going to be used to read the graph from the input file or from standard in. And then we're going to uh, parse it in a depth first search fashion. Now, if I go over to the auto grader and look at what the input looks like, here is the DFS project file. You can see that normally in the input file, there's a, a line that has the number of trials or the number of test cases. We don't have that here. There's just a single test case that we have to worry about. And here, the first line contains information about the graph. This graph is going to have six nodes and nine edges. And what follows are the from and the to for each of the nine edges. So that's all that's there. And here, are the answers that we have to generate. And if you look through the assignment, you see what they ask you to do is they do ask you to do a depth first search sequence starting at every single node. So here is the depth first search sequence starting at node zero. Here's the DFS starting at node one, start two, three. And since the, uh, the this graph has six nodes, the starting numbers are zero through five. So that's basically that. Now we have to write some code initially to read in this graph information. And so I'm just going to go ahead and do that. Now, this code is going to be similar to what you wrote for your adjacency matrix, the only difference being that we don't have to loop over multiple trials. We just have a single trial here. So let me go ahead and put that into the IntelliJ project right now. And that's going to be this line right here, this first line that is going to contain information about our graph, about the number of nodes and the number of edges. And we're going to need those variables. Uh, let's split this line first, though. I think I did that right, hopefully. And now we're going to loop through and we're going to read in the edges. Now, when we're reading the, the edges in, uh, we're going to create a matrix to build our graph. So let's create the matrix right now. And in terms of sizing this, it's going to be a square matrix with the nodes variable determining how large it's going to be. And now what we're going to do is we're going to use a loop. And I'm going to loop this over the number of edges. And I'm going to read in each edge. And I'm going to populate this adjacency matrix uh, with that information. I'm just setting up the input file for now and reading it all in. So now I've read in my from two locations, and I just need to set the matrix up so that it takes that edge information. This matrix that I have is going to be a square matrix, and it's also going to be symmetric because we're using an unweighted graph. And to keep it simple, I'm just going to put zeros and ones in the matrix. The matrix is going to start off all zero up here, and then I'm going to populate the ones that I have here. And after I'm all um, after I'm done with that, the entire um, uh, adjacency matrix will be all read in from the from the input file. And then finally, what I want to do is I want to create a graph and you, uh, pass it this adjacency matrix. So I'm just going to go, okay. And this basically is code. It's not compiling right now because I haven't taken my adjacency matrix code and put it in here yet. But it will compile eventually once I have my graph constructor from the adjacency matrix inside here. So I think that this is all we should need for our test code, except that we need to call our DFS method. So let's do that. Okay, so this is basically to generate our output. This is the algorithm for the depth first search. And you can see that so far we have coded this part right here. And we have also coded this part right here. That was the loop where we call the depth first search in a loop with all the different starting nodes. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to create our depth first search method. And you can see the first thing that we have to do here is we have to create a visited array. The visited array will tell us which nodes we've already visited. So I think while we were doing this algorithm, I had given you a hint on how the visited array should be created. We're going to make it a Boolean. So I'm going to create an array here. And then we haven't really created a constructor yet. So I'll just put a dummy constructor in for now. This is the adjacency matrix. 
And we're just going to save this matrix that's passed to us in the constructor. Right? You can see here I created the matrix and I passed it in the constructor. And now we have to allocate memory for our visited matrix. Sorry, for our visited, yeah, visited array. So let's do that right here. We're just going to go this.visited. Initially, it'll all start off as false, but we're, we wouldn't want to rely on that. Let's just explicitly initialize the visited matrix or array, visited array to be false so that it's nice and clear to everyone. Uh, in fact, I realize we probably should move this to the DFS method because they may want to run it more than once. Let's do that. So uh, I'm going to move this. We have to create our DFS method still. Uh, let's do that. So we're going to go public. So I think that that's going to be there. And I think I also want to start off by uh, clearing the visited matrix. I, I think it's too dangerous to do it in the constructor because if they call this uh, more than once, we're going to need to reset this visited array to be all false for uh, when we start the uh, processing. So if we look now at the one pager I gave you on the DFS algorithm, this page, you can see we have we have we've set the visited uh, to array to be all false. Here, it actually suggests making it a um, a local variable. I, I I'm going to give you some uh, suggestions on why I've decided to make it a an attribute of the class. But there's another conversation I want to have with you, which is important. Uh, you can see that this. Visited matrix is an extremely simple construct. Anywhere in the code, we could ask if a particular node is visited just by ac accessing this array and giving it an index number and seeing if the node has been visited or not. Now, if you were going to do this in a coding competition, uh, I think I would take Ben's suggestion and put this visited uh, matrix uh, array inside the DFS uh, inside the DFS method as a local variable. Here, I think that the visited matrix is an attribute of the graph, and that's one of the reasons that I put it here. Now, the other thing which may seem sort of extra work for you is I'm going to take this information and I'm going to actually create some access methods for it. Now, this may seem like overkill to you because we could just access the array directly. But this is like a really good thing to do. And I need to explain to you why. If you were going to do this as a one-time throwaway, like I said, for a coding competition, you certainly wouldn't want to do this or need to do it. But if you're writing code that's going to have some shelf life, let's say you're going to create production code that's going to live for a few years, it might well turn out that you may want to change how this visited array is set up. You might want to change it to an array list or a link list or a more complicated data structure. And you don't want to impact all the places in the code where they're accessing this visited function. And so by encapsulating it inside a little procedure like this, what you're doing is you're removing the dependencies of the data type from the code. What I'm getting at is anyone who wants to call and find out if a node has been visited, they can call this method and they won't care how the visited function has been implemented, whether it's been implemented in a Boolean array or in an array list or some other structure. You want to take the dependency of the structure away from the code. And so I'm going to create this Boolean method here to query my array and give it a simple answer. I'm going to need a couple of other utility methods as well. I want to be able to change this value. And instead of writing directly to the Boolean here, uh, I forgot to, by the way, put in some qualifiers here probably should do that. Uh, please fix that. I, I meant to do that. Uh, and we're going to also need to be able to change the, the the visited matrix. Each time I visit a node, I'm going to just call the was visited function, and that will mark the node as visited. In other words, I'm using these little methods here to hide the internal structure of my visited array. So I think that's pretty much all we need for the visited. Let's go back to our algorithm and have another look, see what we need to do next. We've, I think we've done all this. The next thing we need to do is we need to create a stack. So let's do that. So we're going to come over here in our DFS algorithm, and we're going to create a stack. OK, so I got that. I'm all set with my stack. Let's go to the algorithm one more time. And I've created my stack. I'm going to insert the starting node into the stack. 
And then I'm going to have a while loop right after that. So let's do that. I'm going to create, I'm going to insert the starting node that was given to me when the procedure was called. And by the way, if, if you want the um, IntelliJ to automatically go to the end of the line, fill in the semicolon, and go to the next line, you just hold down Control Shift Enter, and it will complete the line for you. And that's one of the most useful shortcuts in IntelliJ. I'm a little surprised it's that complicated, but that's all you do. Control Shift Enter. All right, so now I have that. Now I need a while loop. And once again, I'm going to do that control shift enter. And you can see it's nose enough to put in the curly brackets this time instead of a semicolon. It's smart. And now we're going to go through here. And if you have that sheet in front of you, you can see that the next thing we have to do is peek at the stack uh, to set the current element. So I'm going to say in current equals the stack dot p. And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to say if the element has not been visited, so I'm going to say if, then uh, I'm going to print the element. Uh, so that basically means um, one thing I forgot to do here is I need to create an answer variable for my list. So let me do that right up here. That's going to hold our answer. And so what we want to do here is uh, for... Um, we want to say if it has not been visited, we want to visit it. So we're going to just add it to our sequence. So we're just going to go sequence dot add current. And the next thing we're going to do is uh, we're going to print it and we're going to mark it visited. So we're going to say uh, was visited and we're going to mark the current one as having been visited. Okay. So I'm just following along with my little algorithm here. And now we're going to collect all the neighbors. Now we're on to uh, Roman numeral three. Uh, we'll, we'll count on the, um, uh, the code somewhere else to print it. Maybe we need to modify our, uh, I think we probably need to modify here. So we'll just um, probably need to print it right there. Uh, in this method, right before we leave, we're going to return uh, the sequence. That's gonna be the, the list that we're gonna return. We're not finished, though, here. We need to, if we're not visited, we need to collect all the neighbors that have not been visited. And we need, to, starting with the, the smallest one, and, and insert it into the, the stack here. And, and then, uh, finally, uh, if the element has no unvisited neighbors, what we need to do is we need to pop it from the stack. Let me just show you what you're going to need. You're going to need this method called getNeighbors, the in node. And this is from your adjacency matrix code. Right now, your adjacency matrix code probably prints the neighbors when you call this. Uh, but you should change it so that it returns the neighbors to you in some sort of array list. But that's left for you to do. Now, for this project here, the DFS, uh, we're going to need to create another method. This is going to be a utility method. It's going to be called public. So given a node, I want to return what is the lowest unvisited neighbor that it has? That's what I'm going to need for my DFS algorithm. And now what I want to do is I want to go through every item on the list. I want to go through every neighbor. I'm going to put in a debugging statement, which is going to help you during your debugging process. Okay, and then we're going to return this item here. Otherwise, I'm going to print a different debugging statement. Okay, so this is more debugging. We're going to turn off these print statements eventually. But right now, it's going to help us. And what do you think will happen if we get here? What would it mean if we reach this part of the code right here? What do you think? That means that all the neighbors have been visited. Remember, I'm returning the index of the node that's the lowest unvisited neighbor. What should I return here if all the neighbors have been visited? So there you go. I'm assuming this get neighbors is going to return the list in order uh, of from lowest to highest. That's what I'm assuming here. Okay, so that creates our little utility method here. We're going to go back now to our DFS method, and we're going to try and finish this up. So uh, we're going to say if the uh, node has not been visited, uh, we're going to mark it visited. Uh, we've added it to our sequence here. Uh, maybe we should put in a, um, this will be a debugging statement. We'll, we'll turn this off eventually, but um, we'll just put it in for now so we can sort of follow it along as it goes.
So now when we get down here, we're still inside our while statement. We're going to get um, int unvisited equals, and we're going to call that method that we just created here. And now what we're going to do is we're going to check to see if this is the condition. And what are we going to do if it, all the neighbors have been visited? Go back to your one page algorithm and try to figure out what we should do. All the neighbors have been visited. What should we do? We should pop it from this stack. If that's not the case, if we do have a an unvisited node, what should we do then? Uh, uh, one minor change here. I'm going to put a print statement here instead of a print ln. And right here, I'll insert an empty print ln to make sure that it only creates a single line. This is just more debugging stuff. So looking back at our algorithm for depth first search, you can see that we've implemented all the different parts. Now, for those of you who already have your adjacency matrix code all finished, well, pretty much all you will need to do is import or copy and paste that code into here. So you can provide this get neighbors feature, right? And you'll need to modify your get neighbors so that it returns a list of neighbors. You probably have it doing something else right now. 